Well, I think um, there are several challenges for achieving SDG 2. One is lack of investment. So right now, the investment in agriculture research, rural development, uh, in promoting good nutrition, linking agriculture to nutrition and health, is completely underinvested. So we must increase the investment in this area, in research, in development, in bringing different partners together, and to make sure that agriculture will have a strong link to nutrition and health. So that's number one. The second is the policy challenges. I think today our policy is still very much to promote more production, more rice production, more corn production, and a more, let's say, uh, wheat production. I think the policy must be reshaped to deliver nutrition and health. So for example, uh, reduce some of the support to produce these stable foods and use that money to produce more healthy, nutritious foods, such as fruits, vegetables, dairy products, fish, and beyond. I think the third challenge, I guess I can see, is the accountability system. Right now, at a global level, who is really accountable? That's a, to ending hunger and malnutrition, that's SDG 2. At a national level, so who is accountable? Is the national leaders or the civil societies? and even down to the community level. To me, I actually feel more optimis optimistic at a more grassroots level, individual and the communities. I have traveled to Thailand, Bangladesh, and Africa. The so local community must be empowered to solve their own problem. So it's a bottom up. So when they are empowered, they can make their political system accountable to ending hunger and malnutrition. Okay, obviously the solution is indeed to increase the investment, you know. Not only government investment, the private sector investment, international aid, they must increase. I think if they increase, that will be part of the solution. The second, to reshape the policy, I do see some of the countries begin to use nutrition, uh, health, as a goal of agriculture development or as a goal of reshaping agricultural food strategy as a goal of new policy. So, and reduce some of the support or subsidies, water subsidies, uh, energy subsidies, well, that's electricity subsidies, and even out output price subsidies for major, it's a theory crops, we call it big five, rice, wheat, maize, maybe potato, maybe another one could be cassava. So yeah, these crops are very important to let's fill our stomach to solve our hunger problem, but the nutrition and the health definitely needs more, more than that. So can we reform the policy? I think the, the opportunity or the solution is to reform the subsidy policies and use that money to invest in agriculture research, in value chain, to promote a more diverse food production or even more diverse food consumption. Then obviously, in terms of accountability, as a research organization, uh, organization, we can help to generate the data, connect the data, analyze the data, and to uh, set up some sort of a scorecards or some of the, uh, let's say, accountability mechanisms to track and monitor the progress to make everybody accountable.